Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to our last episode for our Nama Expedition lore series with episode 9, the historical campaign. So in this episode, we're going to look at the conflict that was featured in our previous 8 episodes talking about the battles between Zhuge Liang and Meng Huo in what's called the Nama Expedition, which really sparked from the event in 223 when Liu Bei died following a failed campaign against the kingdom of Wu. Now this event really sparked uh, the beginning of the rebellions in the southern parts of the Shu kingdom since Shu Han at the time was weakened from the death of Guan Yu and then the disastrous campaign against Wu where majority of the Shu Han forces were defeated and the retreat back to Bai Di Cheng resulted in Liu Bei dying from natural causes or you know depression and at that point most of the south were seeking opportunities and the main players that we talked about in our first episode where we talked about the rebellion of the three administrators in Gaoding, Yongkai, and Zhu Bao. Now what was historically accurate about these three characters is the order that they rebelled in. So when we talked about it in episode one, Yonghai was the first one to rebel. And then following him, there was Gaoding and Zhu Bao. But historically, Yonghai is actually not the administrator of Jianning as he was portrayed in the Romance of the Three Kingdom. He was just the leader of a very powerful clan, the Yong clan in Jianning area, who did not hold any government positions. He was a descendant of a very famous Han lord in this region that was given titles in the early stages of the Western Han Dynasty to kind of help stabilize the South, but his family has long been a very wealthy clan and resisted the Han rule. So when the opportunity came with the death of Liu Bei, Yongkai was persuaded by Shi Xie, who is a vassal of Wu to the farther south, to rebel against the Shu Han government and to turn himself over as a supporter of Sun Quan. So what Yongkai did as a leader of the powerful plan is spark a coup in Jianning and killed off the administrator at the time. Then when the Shu Han government sent in a second administrator in Zhang Yi, now this Zhang Yi is different than the Zhang Yi general that we talked about in our campaign, but when they sent in a second administrator Zhang Yi to take over the commandery, Yong Kai captured him as well and actually sent him as hostage to Sun Quan to kind of secure his surrender as a present to Sun Quan as well. And then Yong Kai rallied the forces in the Jianning region to march farther south to attack Yongchang commandery, which is a story that's actually consistent in the romance version and the historical version. At Yongchang, Wang Kang was the local administrator and Liu Kai was another government official and together they resisted Yong Kai very successfully as they rallied the local citizens to their cause. And because Yong Kai was having difficulties taking down the Yongchang commandery, he had to seek help from a local influential leader. And that was Meng Huo. Now, Meng Huo is where our story gets very interesting because even history can't agree on the origins of Meng Huo. So technically, Meng is a big clan in the southern region, and they descend from a refugee from the Han Empire. So technically, the Meng clan should be a Han ethnic group clan. But then again, there are cases in history throughout the Han Dynasty where the Nanman people actually assisted local government in putting down various rebellions and then those tribal leaders were rewarded with a Han last name like Meng. So there's still ongoing debates of whether Meng Huo was a Han descendant or that he was actually a Nanman ethnic group with a Han last name gifted to them after helping out Han causes in the past. But regardless, Meng Huo was a local leader that was respected both by the Nanman tribes and by the Han population. So Yong Kai wanted to use Meng Huo's influence to help him gather up men, especially Nanman tribal warriors, to help him attack Yongchang as he was having difficulties convincing the Nanman people to rebel in the first place. So Meng Huo kind of acted as that mediator to help Yong Kai gather up more men to help take down Yongchang. But despite Meng Huo's help here, Yong Kai was unable to take Yong Chang down. But other opportunities were starting to arise as other factions in the south 
started to look for their own rebellions, and that's when Golding and Zhu Bao comes in. So Golding and Zhu Bao are given the positions of administrator of Yue Xi and administrator of Zhang Ke in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but both of these positions, much like Yong Kai's administratorship, are both false in historical senses. Gao Ding is actually a tribal chief. He's the tribal chief of the Yue people in Yue Xi, and previously he has tried to rebel in the past before, but he was put down by Shu Han forces led by Li Yan, and now he saw another opportunity to rebel in the USC commandery. So he actually rebelled and rallied the local tribal people that he commanded and killed the USC administrator. Now USC is one of these commanderies out west, not technically in the southern part of the Shu Han territories, but rather out west that was always filled with unrest as it was filled with a different ethnic group and it's very unstable and a lot of administrators actually die here. So it's not surprising that Galding will take this opportunity where the Shu Han forces are weak and that the deeper south was in a rebellion to take his own chance to rebel against the local government forces. Zhu Bao, on the other hand, is a different case. So Zhu Bao is actually a Shu Han official, but a lower rank than administrator in Zhang Ke. So when all these rebellions were raging on the south, the Shu Han government was rather concerned about Zhang Ke since it was farther east and closer to Sun Quan's kingdom of Wu. So they sent in officials to audit the local government positions and Zhu Bao was kind of scared during that audit and actually the audit itself made him rebel and he killed the local minister there and just threw his lot in with the rebels as well. But these three different rebellions did not work together. So Gao Ding, Yong Kai, and Zhu Bao are separate rebellions, and they didn't gather up in one place to get destroyed by Zhuge Liang together. And speaking of Zhuge Liang, during this whole time, in 223, Zhuge Liang did not make any moves. And even in the year 224, as commanders like Yong Kai were under siege, Zhuge Liang stayed back inside Chengdu because of one man named Wang Lian. Now we talked about Wang Lian in our romance story as someone who spoke out as the secretary general for the prime minister's office to persuade Zhuge Liang to not lead the southern expansion by himself given the risk and the importance of Zhuge Liang to the kingdom. Now Wang Lian historically played the exact same role except for in the year 223 and 224 and by the time it was 225 Wang Lian has died of old age and at that time Zhuge Liang took up the southern expedition. So Wang Lian did play the same role, but it wasn't through a debate at the end which Wang Lian lost. This was actually a debate that Wang Lian has won throughout his life because Wang Lian makes a really good point as someone with a background in managing the salt and iron industry in the Shuhan region that after Liu Bei's defeat in 223, the military and economy of the Shuhan kingdom was not in the best shape and taking on a southern expedition at the time was just simply a bad idea. So the Shu Han kingdom took a whole year off in 224 to fully recover before taking on the southern expedition. And when the southern expedition launched in 225 in spring, Zhuge Liang took on the vice of one of his favorite mentees in Ma Su, where he conducted more or less psychological warfare more than actual warfare to try to persuade the south to never rebel again rather than just killing everyone so that was kind of the tactic that was covered in romance and that part was actually true but ma su didn't actually go south with zhuge liang this was the conversation they had before zhuge liang departed south and then we come to the actual path that zhuge liang took on the southern expedition so they departed from Chengdu, and here we have it on the map with the solid red lines representing Zhuge Liang's route. And they took the water route because that was the most efficient way to march the army. So first they went farther south until they met the Yangtze River, and then they went west to a location called Beishui. And Beishui was a location inside USE Commandery, which is Golding's territory. And Zhuge Liang tried to gather up Golding and Yunkai to show up at Beishui to have a real showdown where you can take down two of these rebel forces together as these two rebel forces had actually joined forces in 225 after Yong Kai keep failing to take down Yong Chang farther down southwest. But before Zhuge Liang could even arrive at Beishui, 
Gao Ding's subordinates actually had a disagreement with Yong Kai, and they actually killed off Yong Kai and absorbed his force. So by the time Zhuge Liang arrived at Beishui for the showdown, it was really just against Gao Ding's force, and Gao Ding's force did not stand a chance, and Gao Ding was killed right here, thus ending most of the rebellion in the Yue Xi region. Further down south, where Yong Kai was originally from, Meng Huo kind of assumed command of the remaining rebel forces, and they were the main challenge at large down south. But before Zhuge Liang departed for that part of the journey, he actually sent out two different forces ahead of the main army. So one of these forces is an eastern task force that's headed for Zhang Ke, led by Ma Zhong. Now Ma Zhong showed up a lot in our lore series, and he was indeed one of these generals that were sent out uh, in separate army. So Ma Zhong had command of his own army headed east to take down Zhu Bao. And Ma Zhong made very short work of Zhu Bao. And after this whole expedition was over, Ma Zhong eventually took over as the administrator of Zhang Ke. So that's why there's slight half-truth in the lore series and all these characters that were kind of minor characters before this point, but then they were added into the romance because they were there historically. So Ma Zhong is one of those characters that they kind of put in here because he did play a major role in the history of the event. And the other force that was sent down ahead of Zhuge Liang went south first to see if they can take on Meng Huo's force by themselves, and this group was led by a man named Li Hui. Now, Li Hui was someone who we did not talk about at all in the Romance of the Three Kingdom version, and he was not included in it, but he was actually a very relevant general of this time. So Li Hui was sent down to Jianning, where Yong Kai originally rebelled, and the reason why he was picked to lead the army to Jianning was because before Liu Bei even entered the Shu Ba region, Li Hui was working under Li Yan and Dong He before that in this area, and he was the original postmaster general of Jianning. So he was very familiar with the area there, so Zhuge Liang trusted him to lead a force there. But once he arrived in Jianning, Meng Huo's forces greatly outnumbered him, and he was in trouble right away. So he kind of lied to Meng Huo and said that he was actually here to join the rebellion and left the Shu Han forces. So he kind of cheated his way out of death by pretending to surrender. And then after he found an opportunity when they let their guards down, he actually escaped farther east to try to meet up with Ma Zhong's forces in Zhang Ke and he was able to make that escape and survive. And then he and Ma Zhong joined their forces together and then departed for Jianning again as they awaited for Zhuge Liang's main force to finish their sweep of the western territories before they had the final showdown with Meng Huo around this region in Jianning. And in this final showdown against Meng Huo between Zhuge Liang and Meng Huo, it was not as exciting as the romance version, obviously, now, the records of the fighting between Zhuge Liang and Meng Huo doesn't even exist in the records of Three Kingdom, but it does exist in the Spring Autumn book for the Han and Jin dynasties. So there are some historical sources with this story, but then there are also other historical sources without this story. So that's why this whole saga is so up for debate of whether it's real or not. There are debates whether Meng Huo even existed. But in general, I think the agreement is Meng Huo was a real person, he did rebel, and he did lose repeatedly to Zhuge Liang here, but maybe not to the degree of seven captures and seven releases, but there were definitely historical recording of saying that Zhuge Liang has captured him, showed him the camp, very much like his third capture, where he tried to showcase the might of the Shu Han forces to get him to surrender through that psychological warfare that we talked about earlier. And the result of that was Meng Huo telling Zhuge Liang that I have seen your camp, give me another chance, I'll go fight you and I can beat you now. But the result is Zhuge Liang beating him again and then eventually Meng Huo just surrendered here. And when Meng Huo surrendered, there's alternate versions of what happened after. There's versions where Meng Huo returned to Chengdu with Zhuge Liang to take up a position in the Shu court. Because remember, Meng Huo is not a savage like he's depicted in romance or in pop culture or in gaming. He's probably just a very wealthy local clan leader uh, from whether Han background 
or very cultured Naman background that has assisted the Han population before. So he probably returned to court to work with the government and also kind of as a hostage. And there's other version where Zhuge Liang left him in this region to manage the whole situation down south for him. And some of the generals that we featured here, like Li Hui, Lu Kai, and Ma Zhong, also stayed behind in the commanderies where they fought. Ma Zhong stayed in Zhangke, Li Hui stayed in Jianning, and Lu Kai stayed in Yongchang. And they kind of facilitated the post-war efforts here. And Li Hui in particular was in charge of sending tributes back to Chengdu. And the main result of this campaign is the security of the south, and also, Zhuge Liang secured a lot of tribute that could help him in the future northern expeditions that is to come. And those tributes included gold, silver, war horses, ox for farming, and other raw materials that were plentiful in the south. So that's kind of the overarching result of this particular expedition. Now, as for the statement that, you know, once Meng Huo has surrendered seven times and the South will never rebel again, that's actually false. So in a period of 10 years following this Southern expedition, many parts of the South and the West actually continued to rebel. And the Shu Han kingdom had to deal with the Southern and Western rebellions as they were making their Northern expedition pushes. Now, the farther South rebellions in Yunnan didn't make any big splashes it was not as severe as this one so overall the deep south was kind of secured in this situation but out west the unrest continued especially in usc commandery which by a lot of records in the shu kingdom eventually became uninhabitable for the han population and that no administrator dared to take office there because they were just destined to get killed and then at the same time in a few years, the Tiang population to the northwest of the Shu Han kingdom also started to rebel as well. So there were definitely continuous rebellions during this period, and this Nanma expedition didn't actually solve much in that aspect. And it was actually a very short expedition. It started in the spring of 225, and Zhuge Liang was back in Chengdu by fall. So at max six, seven months, and it was taken care of. So that's also another evidence that's used against the argument that Meng Huo was captured seven times and released seven times because just the degree of marching the army through this territory would take a lot longer because it took Zhuge Liang about three months to move from Chengdu, where he left, to the farthest south. So if he fought there and continued to capture and release through seven battles, then he's not going to make it back home by fall, which is... You know, written down in stone because there are records of that as he prepared for northern expeditions in the following year. So that's kind of our tale here. Now, despite how simple the historical version tend to be, uh, I'm still very hopeful that we'll get a very rich DLC out of this just because the romance material is just crazy in terms of the potential for new units like the elephants and the animal tamers and also you have the vine armors and you also have a lot of different Shu officers that were more famous and that were included in the romance version like Zhao Yun, Wei Yan, Ma Dai. In particular, Wei Yan and Ma Dai will probably get their own unique models through this opportunity in this DLC. And I also kind of want to see Zhuge Liang not on a horse and get his uh, war cart, which is basically a wheelchair that he used uh, in battle. That was kind of a main feature of him in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and I hope to see that in the game as well. So this concludes our lore series uh, completely. It took us about a total of 10 episodes. We started with episode 0, giving the backdrop of the story, and we're ending with episode 9 here, giving you a historical look at what actually happened during this campaign. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lore series, and we'll be jumping to other stories going forward, and I hope to see you guys then. Bye.